Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. In 2010-11, the English champions and the Spanish champions faced off in the Champions League final at Wembley. By the end of the match, Sir Alex Ferguson would state that this Barcelona side was the greatest he had ever faced. The scoreline only reflected part of this story, as Barcelona ran out 3-1 winners thanks to Pedro, Messi and Villa, whilst Rooney netted for the Reds. A closer look at the stats reveals a much more one-sided encounter, as Barcelona had almost 70% possession and 22 shots to United's 4. But what tactics did Pep Guardiola and Sir Alex Ferguson use? In this video, we take a look. A quick reminder of the formations used by both managers. Guardiola stuck to his beloved 4-3-3 with the following personnel. Ferguson in response lined up in a 4-4-1-1 with Wayne Rooney just in behind Javier Hernandez. Let's start with how Barcelona looked to attack. Barcelona had a few different ways to build up. When Manchester United tried to press them out of the box with the front two of Rooney and Hernandez, Barcelona spread Mascherano and Gerard Piquet to the width of the box and used Valdez to create a 3 vs 2. A common pattern would then emerge being a goal kick going out to the centre back who was immediately pressed by the forward. The ball would go back to Valdez and the presser follows and Valdez now returns the ball to the centre back who now has space as the centre forward is taken out of the game. The other alternative was when Manchester United allowed the initial central pass to the centre-backs. If Rooney pushed up to press one of the centre-backs, Barcelona would seamlessly shift to a three-man backline with one of Xavi and Busquets dropping between the centre-backs to again create a 3 versus 2 At the same time, the remaining central midfielder and Iniesta would drop to four midfield options, whilst Messi again dropped into the midfield to create another 3 versus 2 in that region, allowing them to play confidently into the midfield. Another, more common occurrence was for Rooney to stay behind Javier Hernandez acting as the tip of the midfield and Barcelona, when this occurred, played in a fairly defined double pivot of Xavi and Busquets to provide a 2 vs 1 option against Rooney who was trying to make up numbers in this region. But when the ball was higher up the pitch, Barcelona's main goal was to create a midfield overload against United's midfield. This is because not only did United use a 2 in midfield against Barcelona's 3 on paper, but one of the two was Giggs, who was more offensive whenever he played as a central midfielder. As a result, he often rotated with Park moving into the centre as he had a higher work rate, but this still left them short. And Barcelona looked to maximise these strengths by adding another body centrally. United at times dropped Rooney in to form a traditional 4-3-3 to even up the numbers in this region. But this left Hernandez utterly isolated when they looked to attack and as a front foot manager, Ferguson tried to keep Rooney high as much as possible. So it was usually Giggs or Park who tucked in from their wide berth to try and even things up. Alves, now freer, would advance to the right wing position which triggered Villa to move to the centre forward draw and gave Messi the freedom to drop into the midfield region. It would be generous to say Messi played as a false 9 in this match. He was effectively a midfielder who just got forward a lot. A quick look at the heat map for Messi, Xavi and Iniesta shows the overlap in regions they operated, which backs this up. But Alves from here could be an offensive weapon. With the ball on the left, Messi would move higher into this right half space and this often dragged Evra out of position as he liked to stay close to Messi. This meant Barcelona often looked for the chip ball to the free Alves and he could look to cross and they did create a dangerous chance from this pattern. When the ball was on Barcelona's left, it was Antonio Valencia instead who looked to tuck into the midfield to even things up. Barcelona also had a solution for this, as Pedro would push high, dragging Fabio backwards, leaving Abidal as the spare man out wide, and when the ball went to him and the man moved wide to him, Iniesta would then shift into this region to become free to receive the ball here. 
but the central mismatch was the reason United lost this match. If the two midfielders sat off of Xavi and Busquets to focus on Messi and Iniesta, the two would have all the time needed to look for a pass to make the difference. But when they pushed high, they grew the space between the lines, which was a constant problem as Messi or Iniesta could get onto the ball in this region and look to cause damage. This is exactly what happens on the first Barcelona goal. Rooney is ahead of the Barcelona midfield. Busquets and Iniesta form a double pivot and Carrick and Giggs are drawn towards the ball, whilst Xavi is untracked, making the movement between the lines. He receives the ball and Messi moves to the right half space, as discussed, drawing Evra out of position. Instead of Alves, it's Pedro making the run outside him to receive the ball free and have a shot and score. It's important to note that United were also unsure what to do with Messi when he did drop into the false nine roll. When they sat off of him, he could turn and run at them. But more commonly, one of Vidic and Ferdinand would jump out to try and mark him. This often caused Everett to tuck in, concerned about the central space, and if Messi beat his man, he could then spread it wide and make his way into the box, and they did create a big chance in this manner. But again, just outside the box, with United being outnumbered in the midfield, this led to several problems. Xavi, Iniesta, Messi and Busquets would outnumber the United midfield even if a man tucked in. Evra often dropped central, with Alves moving high, so United's left midfielder couldn't afford to tuck in. This meant just outside the box, in the right half space, Barcelona's three could shift the ball across using their 3 vs 2 advantage and space was freed up here for the shot from range. Barcelona's shot map shows this, with them taking an unusually high number of shots from range due to often being unmarked in this position. This is also how Messi scores his goal. Evra is tucked in on David Villa and initially Giggs looks in position to track Messi by tucking in while Park and Carrick have a man each. Giggs spots Alves arriving in space and drops deep to track him and suddenly Messi is in space unmarked. The ball comes out to him and the goal results. When United looked to counter from these positions, with Barca pressing, they looked to go immediately long to unleash the pace of Hernandez. However, he was often caught offside. Alternatively, Pique and Mascherano could stagger themselves against the one man to make sure they won the ball. And if that failed, Valdez was often on hand to sweep up. But when United built up in controlled play, they tended to push both of their fullbacks high, which would reduce the centre back's passing options. And due to their midfield numerical advantage, Barca could move one of their central midfielders wide to pick up a fallback. This also meant Barca could press with the front two with a winger joining Messi and this pressure meant that United were often forced into a speculative long ball which is often swept up. However, higher up the pitch, it's important to note that United looked to overload the box by allowing Giggs or Park to advance as a third man runner into the box and get into goal scoring positions and this is indeed what led to Rooney's goal. Giggs is high ahead of Rooney who had dropped into the midfield. His run sees him get free in the box, drawing defenders to him and allowing Rooney to have a free shot inside the box. However, this tactic often did more harm than good. When their midfielder advanced and there was a turnover, it left Carrick stranded against 2-3 Barcelona men in the midfield, allowing them to pass around him and this situation presented itself quite often. But overall, the scoreline may have been relatively close, but the match wasn't. Sir Alex was generous in his praise after the match, saying that this was the best team he had faced at the peak of their cycle. But what did you make of these teams and of this match? If you enjoyed this, check out the previous video, a tactical analysis of Barca's 5-0 mauling of Real Madrid, as well as other team analysis such as the Invincibles, United 0708 and a full Barca analysis linked at the end of this video. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.